The meat hashtag meat. Oh, I don't want to take their hashtag. It's an important no. hashtag. Yeah, it's not me mine dot. Take. Yeah, that's not cool. As well, me as. Hey, that's what we should hashtag do. Hashtag me, me as, as well. well. Me also. Right. Boom, nailed it. Meats. Uh, all right, here goes. Oh, this isn't gonna work. Okay, now will. Uh, There's no way this will work. There's no way this is gonna freaking work. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. This is the Boop Show, episode 262. The date is October 26, 2020. Welcome back to the Boop Show. This is the Boop Show, and I'm Scott Johnson with Brian Dunaway. Hello, Brian Dunaway. Oh, hi, Scott Johnson. How are you doing today? Oh, I don't know. I got a sore throat. <laughs> I'm tired. I played Warcraft. <laughs> I don't know. It's all right. It's okay. You, you know, know, the great thing about being a gamer and being entertained by games is a sick day can sometimes turn into an adventure. It could, could be yeah. all day gaming. Could be Excuse. A could be a play day. As yeah, the, play day. It's say. like, uh, I'm not feeling well, honey. Yeah. I mean, be. I don't feel enough well enough to go to work, but I can certainly lay in the bed and play some WoW. Yeah, I wouldn't mind doing that, but the problem is I'm not really set up to do it. Oh, this is all right. wrong in this camera. Sorry, everybody. I'm not set up to do it anywhere but here. So but in the toilet. In the gotcha. toilet. So if you want me, you know where to find me. <laughs> If you want me, if you really, really if you're looking need me, for me, you'll know where I'm in the me. bathroom. Hey, check this out. We got a lot to talk about games and stuff and things. So stick around. It starts right here. All right. As you may be aware, we were not here last week, but don't you worry your little heads. They're games. That was all my fault. Well, you had stuff. You had things. You yeah, know. I had things. Yeah, we don't. We're we're a we're a um, take care of things first kind of business around here. If you got stuff, yeah, you gotta get we done. don't take care of business. We can't play the video games. You got to work hard and play hard. Yeah, it's not like we're talking about you know you had to go fold some socks or something. You had a busy, important day. Big stuff going. I on. additionally had to fold socks, but mm. I don't really fold socks as much as I like tuck them. Do you tuck socks? Uh, socks? Do I tuck socks? Yeah, yeah I guess you, I do. you don't. You don't actually fold them. You don't actually like take them, like put them. Oh, I'm gonna fold you no, now. That's the what, literal fold. That's for psychos. I don't do that. Yeah, no. You actually you shove. You shove one. Now, do you shove the whole band or do you shove like the whole sock into another sock? A uh, whole sock and another sock. So I end up with like a, a sock ball. A sock ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Basically right. that. Now and, I know who you are. And also Kim does a lot of it. So uh, I don't remember the last time I actually folded a bunch of socks. It's been a while. I have to admit. <laughs> Not that she has to. Sock in my life. Whoa! Chat room says they tie socks. Rabbit Magic says, "Whoa!" Oh yes, I've seen. I've tied socks. I've, I've dated crazy people before. <laughs> I have never tied a sock ever. <laughs> I have seen a tied sock. It is. It's kind of neat. Uh, I don't have the patience to untie them, so that's the reason why I, I mostly wear elastic long socks up to my calves. So it's just really easy to go a floop. You know, just fold it down that one time and yeah. throw it in the in the thing and go. Yeah. Blah. That's how I do it. That's that's my yeah. recommendation. I don't understand the advantage of tied socks, but I think I think you have to have like I think Wait, you have to have like a what are tied silky socks? socks. What is it? Oh, tied like tied together. That's what you're saying. Yeah, like you tie tied. them together. Yeah, you tie them together. Is it like silky socks that are maybe like dressier socks or thin? Mine are all thick, athletic socks because you know gamers. Athletic yeah, gamers socks. are pretty athletic. Go sweaty feet. Sure, esports. Yeah, right. Esports. <laughs> you're busy doing the esports, and uh, you know what that means? It means a sweaty hot sock. Uh, oh my everybody. god man does anything stink worse than dress socks you've got to sweat in oh that's no, the worst it is the worst. feet sweat no it's horrendous <laughs> it's wrong and it's horrendous and nobody should have to be subjected to that for any length of time yes yeah, right sock talk here on the boob show sock talk welcome to it all right uh i'm going to start things off with talk about a game that actually came out nine years ago today and i know wow. this is going to sound weird why is scott talking about an old game because i want to talk about a game that is old but holds the hell up and old but hold holds not only holds up plays just as well maybe better today given that anybody with any hardware of any kind is going to be able to run this just smoothly and beautifully which it kind of needs to be to be truly appreciated that game is renegade ops it's uh, technically yeah. called the collection 
but really the original game is just called renegade ops now this is a game why why didn't you call me up man i always have my renegade ops loaded up on my steam it's really small and i bought it with a four player pack and uh because this is like four player co-op right i, don't, do that, I don't know is it i haven't tried i've only done the i think player. so oh all right well if it is we should play this so basically let me describe it to people renegade ops is a game <laughs> Made by the <laughs> it is a game that you play as a renegade. <laughs> it's made by the, uh, in operations as a renegade um, from the fine people over at Avalanche Studios. You know them from the Just Cause series and the Mad Max open world game and a bunch of other stuff. They're they make and a lot of games. By they have yeah. a yeah published by Sega. They have a huge uh, studio here in Salt Lake City and put out a bunch of stuff. In fact, I think this game may have been devved right here in town. I'm not 100 percent sure on that, but. Uh, it's a dual stick shooter of sorts, but yeah, it's almost a bullet hell. Almost. I mean, it, it's sometimes when you upgrade your, your equipment enough, it kind of feels like you're just da- nailing it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's just, just a, just, just ammunition pouring out of the front of your Jeep or your truck or your tank or whatever you're driving. Yeah. Uh, imagine like a kind of a GI Joe scenario to the story where you're a bunch of elite soldier types who were brought in as, as these uh, renegade ops or mercenaries to get a bunch of dirt done in what seems to be like, you know, Cobra Commander Town levels <laughs> Cobra of stuff. Cobra Commander Town. Yeah. I mean, it's really I, is. I don't think, right? That's Cobra what they're, that's what they're playing now, it's, it's all inside the vehicles, right? Because I, I, for some reason, I was thinking you get out of the vehicle for a minute, but I don't think that's the, I don't think that's no, the fact. No, you swap I'm vehicles sometimes. You end up in a helicopter sometimes. Sometimes you're in a jet, okay. you're in a boat. That's you know. right. That's what it is. So it's a little like, uh, what was that game? And uh, I'm seeing you mow down a couple of people on the, on the ground. Oh, by the way, you are just, that thing is just flaming hot right now. You've got fire coming out of your truck and you're going against a, some kind of tank. Yeah, that's your special for this particular car. And you can choose between a bunch of uh, renegades, and they all have different abilities. Some of them put up a shield. Some, like EMP, all the electronics around to go dead. Uh, You know, different stuff, different different flavors. But you basically, in terms of firepower, they're all pretty much the same. Um, You upgrade your weapon as you go along, a lot like a dual-stick shooter. What makes this different is the environments are, are almost like take just cause but then zoom the camera way out and have it be top yeah, down. Yeah, that's a great comparison. The 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 terrain looks like a just cause map, right? It looks like you're just pulled yeah. out. And I and I'm pretty sure this is a version of that engine. Like this is them Probably. playing with that just cause engine back in the 360 days and saying, "Hey, what if we made a top down shooter?" And that's basically what they made. Um the reason I'm bringing it up now cuz it's literally 9 years old today. Today is the day it came wow, out it 9, nine years, ago. years old. Yeah, which is nuts. It I plays... paid $20 for four copies of this thing by the way. Oh, well done. Right now it's yeah. uh 15 on its own, so you've still got a pretty good deal. Oh yeah. Um it goes on sale all the time, which you can totally wait for. I think I've seen it as low as like 4 bucks at one point. Um and it it goes up and down. Right now it's 15. It's on Steam. I don't know where else you'd get this. I assume Xbox will support the 360 version of it because of all their backwards compatibility. So you may be able to get it there, no problem, through Game Pass. I don't even know. Um, I meant to check on that, which is a really cool thing. This is one of the things I'm excited about with the Series X and S is people are going to just have a a wealth of discovery ahead of them that us on PCs are sort of used to, right? We're used to a billion weird games being available uh, right, right. The we, there's a whole site called Good Old Games. It's just like, oh, you want to, you want a little trip to Nostalgia Town? Come yeah, on, let's come go on over here and check it out. Hop but, in. But over here or on 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 Xbox, you're not only going to have that uh, that kind of selection in theory, but you're going to also pay a very low monthly fee to get all of it if you want it. So anyway, I don't know if this game's even included in that, so I'm, I'm making some of this up as I go. But I kind of hope it is. I want people to discover it. I don't think a lot of people knew about it. It's not like it's got, you know, billions of reviews or anything on Steam. I think it kind of came and went. Nobody right. really noticed. I think it would do better today even. But um, it's just one of those games that I like to unearth once in a while and play. It feels really good. It explodes really good. Uh, the story is ridiculous, like over the top. We got to get in there and steal the missiles before the commander of the thing. It's, I mean, it's total yeah. G.I. Joe. It's just G.I. Joe. It, it's that, it's got like that little thing. comic window that pops up, like a little comic window mm-hmm. pane, like you see in a comic book, yep. right? Yep. And the, and the little the little renegade op guy pops yeah. in there. The bad guy's yeah. got a stupid mustache and 
it's all very dastardly and he's got a plan to destroy the world and you know by the by the way don't forget me it is a dual stick shooter like you said but it, the, the the vehicles are just so much fun uh to to skirt around there's a lot of drifting in in the mm-hmm. dirt a lot paths of weird and things. physics and stuff sure yeah. Yes. No, it's no, I should say I, weird physics, like legit physics. Like it feels like you're really physics. you're you you do have to pay attention a little bit to how you're driving. It isn't just turn on a dime. Uh, right. Sometimes you'll you'll miss a you know a, a point and swerve off the hill and die or whatever. Um, that's another thing to note here. Unless you're playing it on easy, this thing is no joke. It's like difficult. Oh, yeah. You don't have the save points are there, but they're but they're more like mission based save points. So you need to right. accomplish a thing before it's going to let you come right back where you were. Um, and that's what you're doing yeah. right now in this in this video footage. Not Maybe not you, but somebody's doing it. They're going to mission point to mission point. It'll let you know mm-hmm. uh, where the next place is, and you got to be there in, in so many seconds. And Yeah, and there's sometimes multiple so mission much. points. It's not always just yeah. the one. Uh, like this one has two, and you can tell which one you're closest to because the red arrow is red, and the other one's grayed out. If you went closer to the grayed out one, it would turn red and basically kind of become your primary thing right now also you can see in this video if you're watching live or on youtube uh he's currently running a a timed mission and that happens sometimes it'd be like a three minute countdown on a bomb or something like that usually i hate timed stuff but it actually works for me okay i don't mind it Uh, it's generous with the time as long as you're not playing stupid exactly um it is just a fun thing i remember every it's funny because i i played i played this thing for like it seemed like a month. I yeah. mean, oh, yeah. you know, this is nine years ago. I just play, I just played this thing. It was just the best. I think I even got it on the 360 as well. Um, I and as well. I remember yeah. playing the crap out of this. It's got right now. It's got the remote play on Steam, which mm-hmm. means that you can uh, remote play together. Yep. So you can. Uh, so you you got your two player split screen. Yeah. Like you do in your co-op couch, and then you got your up to four player online competitive co-op. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the but thing, I never, but I bought four copies of this and I gave it away to 300 people. I remember this back in the day and no one ever played with no me. No one ever played with you. Played lame. That's lame. <laughs> no one ever played with me. No, I'm talking about back in the day. Now, I'm going to argue. I bought this on Steam. I'm going to argue the one thing that's a real standout about this game is you might say, well, nine years ago, everything looks like crap from then. This game looks no, this great. It looks like new. Like you could tell me if I didn't know about this game, you could say, hey, this thing just got released. It looks pretty cool. Kind of an arcadey, dual skit, sticky uh, thing. Let's check it out, and I would believe you. Like it's that good looking. Right. So this this the minimum requirements is uh, Windows Vista, Windows XP not supported. Yeah. So XP, you know it's old, it. but not that old. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's old enough for the Vista years, but in fact, I, I mean, remember you're not, the very you're not running this in a DOS box or nothing. But my, you know, my first real push into Steam was right around the time I picked this up, among some other games, but yeah very fond feelings about it and it's only 15 bucks even now on sale all the time like i said so keep an eye on that if 15 seems like too much and if you think oh nine years ago i don't know how it holds up i promise you this holds up way more than you think it, it, does. it looks it still looks as fun as i couldn't i can't believe it's nine years old it seems like a impossibility to me yep but that's like what and did you say what drew you back in you was just like uh, just you was just it. looking through your library and yeah. just like look at this giant I was library doing, of actually, games this is how I it came have. from it, this is what it came from i was going through my library going all right i got like 1800 games or something right on right on steam so many codes and so many giveaways and so many who knows what all plus the stuff i bought and i just thought there's a lot of this i'm never going to touch once again <laughs> or you know once or ever <laughs> right. So I'm just going to go through and do hide this from my view, uninstall anything that I don't want on the drives, that kind of stuff. And um, so I did that. And what down at the said, bottom, I was like, wind. oh, look at this. I forgot I had this freaking renegade ops, dude. I'm going to play this. And I ended up getting sucked into this for like another six hours. Oh, yeah. And this so includes all the DLC, by the way. There's like a, the version you get now for 15 has like all the extra levels and the bonus stuff. Yeah, I might, I might not have the DLC. I just, like I said, there was a, I remember it was a big deal when i picked it up and, yeah it's a cool yeah. game for real like i i i say this like ah oh, look at scott with his old freaking let's go to old shit day <laughs> but i'm saying worth, your money. worth the talk. money it's worth the money and uh it's worth the 15 bucks it is and i really like that game i hope they i mean they're never going to do another one but i wish they did because i don't right think yeah it it's, it's a little long in the tooth now if they did another one it would be quite yeah uh, but it trick. doesn't play long in the tooth anyway that game once again, from Avalanche Studios and Sega is the publisher. 
Nine years old today. That's called Renegade Ops. You can't miss it. It's on uh, Steam at me. Like I say, be available on some console stores. I don't know where or what, but worth looking there if you want to find out. Okay, Brian, let's talk about Darkwood, which sounds well, like... Well, uh, welcome to welcome to Oldsville. We're playing some throwback games today. I've been looking at this one for a long time. This mm-hmm. one's... Uh, don't worry, I've got a brand new game as well after this one, but same. I did the same thing. I kind of had like this... I missed this game mm-hmm. back in the day. It came out August the 17th, 2017. Oh, so, nice. you know, it's not like... It's not, it's not 2011 old, but Darkwood. It's an older game. Uh, it is... Uh, it, it is perfect for this time of year. It's dark and moody, and you're in the woods. I mean, Ooh. it's dark, and you're in the woods. Do you call this a it's Halloween game? For- is it a Halloween game or just a regular scary game? It's just a regular scary, scary game. So if you like all those uh, th- those fairy tale type games, uh, this is kind of like a a a, a thriller of mm. sorts. But what it really is is a top down horror survival game that it has a lot of atmosphere and does it in a 2d environment because oh, you know you got you i have this this is the one that's kind of hotline miami view right kinda right it's, it's very much top down yeah yeah, yeah. yes okay. yeah you, you got your you, you know you got your uh, three-quarter top down which is 3d with a top down view this is literally everything is flat except for the trees which are which are coming up at you like in this it, it is really cool how the the visual of the of the game with these trees pointing down to your character who is generally in the center of the screen and it's why it's important is because this is a game is a very dark game both in atmosphere and in storytelling and it all plays together because you have a very limited view you have uh you have a flashlight most of the time you can get other things too you can uh when you're collecting and trying to survive, you can get some torches, but for the most part, you've got this very limited view of what you're doing. When you first start, you actually start in a very long prologue. I'd actually thought I'd already started the game. I thought I was, you know, a good hour into the game or something. I wasn't quite that long, but I was playing the prologue and the prologue, you start out uh, as a doctor who, who wakes up in this cabin of filth, right? But it's very dark, but you can see there's like there's these it's all muted colors, but everything kind of looks like there's blood kind of like kind of gross looking. Yeah. Just where are you right now? You're in the woods, like in crusty, a cabin in the it's woods, like crusty, rusty wood or blood. Yeah, crusty. But there's blood stains or maybe yeah. blood stains. Kind of looks like somebody took a pig, cut his throat and drug it all around the house. Maybe that's what happened. Maybe I don't know, did. because the game's not going to tell you you're waking up and you're kind of a little bit out of it. And you're playing as this doctor and you're looking around at your different tools of torture. It looks like you're like, oh, my God, what is this guy doing? Do you in the know, woods? have a memory of what kind of doctor you were or what's the, I can't remember how that works. Did you wake I, up? I, I, you you're some kind of surgeon of some sort, I'm assuming, because okay. you have all the surgical equipment, but not like good surgical equipment. No, if you're looking at the screen right now. You'll see what kind of surgical equipment I'm talking about, like old rusty, rusty cage kind of gross stuff. So you're you're going you're this is an explorer game so in addition to trying to survive you're doing a lot of exploring and you'll be starting out in a cabin and as you go along you'll also be encountering other uh other places that will be mostly cabins that are uh, all in disarray there's not like a lot of people hanging out in this world it's basically an abandoned world essentially and you're lost in the woods even though you you live here so it's kind of like and it's, it's supposed legit to make you freaky feel by the way filtered. it's freaky as shit Everything about this it, zone. Ugh, I hate it. It is it is so freaky. And when you first start playing, you don't notice because you're kind of going around and stuff. There's no music in the prologue. You didn't even realize it. And you're like, what's going on here? Mm-hmm. Up until a certain point in the prologue, and all of a sudden, when you get outside into the woods, the music starts playing really quietly. And also, there's a dog going, and you come across a dog. I don't want to give anything away, but the dog's not doing well, and you don't help. All right, so... <laughs> This is not a happy story at all. So I have to get through the prologue. At the end of the prologue, you run across uh, you, uh, a stranger. Stranger danger. Oh, stranger this guy's danger. Got a, yeah, this guy's got a key, right? And uh, and it's got a number on it. And so you get in, and you get the key. And suddenly it switches from being the doctor to being this stranger guy. Ooh. And you don't have much more information either. But apparently the doctor has kidnapped you. So you were playing the bad guy all along in the oh prologue. Oh my gosh. Who oh my God, he's lost his mind. Who would have known? Who would have thunk it? 
right? So he locks you up, right? Okay, so he locks you up. And that's the, I don't want to give too much because the prologue is fairly quick. And that kind of gives you the idea of what you're dealing with here. So now you're the stranger and you kind of start over again after you escape from the doctor and you're in a cabin and you suddenly discover why you're doing all this survival stuff. Because even though during the daytime, I thought it was always dark. All right. I was like, oh, it's nighttime. I'm carrying around a flashlight. No, daytime flashlight, nighttime flashlight useless mm. <laughs> it's just dark dark mm. daytime dark nighttime pitch black wow so you gotta you gotta do your collecting uh during the daytime by the way you get a map the map has uh you're you're kind of writing it as you go along so you have like these if you've discovered something it'll show up on your map but otherwise you just kind of got to feel your way through because like in shapes you're like oh i'm in this area and there's shapes here for me to kind of navigate through. Oh, I located something. Now it's on my map and I can navigate and get back where I need to. By the way, the whole time you're doing all this, there's creepy sounds going on. It's just, it sucks you in. It's amazing that a 2D game, top down 2D game can give you such willies. But I had the willies the entire time I was doing it. Okay, so you're in your, you're in your camp. You've been uh, collecting wood. You're collecting gas. And the reason why I got to collect gas is because you have a, a generator. You got to fill that thing. It uses up the gas. You got to go out and get some more. And while you're doing all that, you're going to need to start barricading up your house, which is in bad shape. All right. It's in bad shape. And so it's got a lot of holes and stuff in it where things can get in. Mm. And you're like, what kind of things? Well, you're going to find out. So if you play dark wood, you're going to find out what's getting into your cabin because that's what you do during the daytime. You do your survival thing, you get it all done, you get back, you put your traps in place, you you barricade everything up, and you hope you did a good job, and hopefully you didn't forget a back door somewhere and something won't get you. Uh, you, enter, you run into some really interesting characters as well. Uh, there's, uh, there's some really otherworldly fairy tale stuff going on here, man. It really feels like that Eastern European kind of dark moody kind of story mm. and uh i i really enjoyed it 2017 like i said it, i played about 16 hours i didn't play 16 hours the how long to beat is about 16 hours on average uh the game is about 15 dollars right now um i actually received this game for review mm. uh and i've been enjoying it i got it on pc team did i say who the uh publisher was I'm not sure if I did. I'm going to say it right now, though. Acid Wizard Studio is dropping the acid and they're publishing it. What do you think, Scott? You think you're down with this? You think you can play some Dark Wood? You got the game it. already. I've already You've played, already played it, it. And I didn't play very long because it freaked me the hell out. I didn't expect a 2D horror game to get under my skin like it did, but it did. It really does. And one of the ways it does it is it really it does a really good job of sucking you in by by making it slow paced so you yeah. can't move it so fast. And they ensure that by giving you a very limited stamina. So you'll be walking along a little bit and you'll come you'll be out of breath and your character's going. <gasps> mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot. Of, I didn't even talk about all the crafting. Uh, the crafting is um, I played this with the full controller support. Uh, you can do a keyboard or do partial controller support, I believe. But I played this fully with the with the with the controller, uh, and I, I was able to craft and do everything I needed to do. Uh, you'll be collecting a lot of wood so that you can craft things to you know make torches, to make uh, booby traps, uh, just it, just about anything you would need to survive in this horror that is dark wood. And you're, the whole point is to try to escape. And as you go along, you keep finding and uncovering creepy crap like photos. It's like, oh, what is that a photo of? Well, I don't even know what that photo is. It's like some kind of weird, scary thing that I don't want to know. I want to look at it anymore. Yeah. I don't and uh, right. Uh, duh. So you didn't make it very far then. So you just kind of no, like, uh, just enough to like say, yeah. Well, OK, I remember yeah. one of my complaints was I didn't like the controls. I thought the controls were wonky. They had like right. A, we're you using a controller or we're you using tried it both ways. And in both cases, they right. just used a funky layout. It's like buttons that you would just normally naturally expect an a to do on a 360 right. controller or, or an xbox one controller you'd expect a certain behavior and instead it's like right. no you push y for that you push x for that like it just didn't it didn't play by any kind of standard normal rules rules and that bugged yeah, it, me it annoyed me it it reminded me of uh your resource tab you know i i reminded me of terrarium is that right terraria 
terrarium. 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 Terraria. 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 See, I can't think of that at the same time thinking dark, dark wood. Uh, but anyway, it's got like this, terraria. like you said, it's kind of difficult because if you need to, you have three equipment slots. Yeah. And if you need to equip something, then you have to press uh, to pick it up from your, your inventory. And then you have to move it and you kind of hard to see because everything is so dark and you can't really tell what's highlighted. Um, but eventually I got to the point that it was okay because I wasn't, when I stopped trying to rush through and really just took my time, which is what the game is trying to get you to do, uh, then it worked out a little better. There's no big jump scares, so I don't think you'll be screaming at this game. So don't expect jump scares from this game. This game is just a dark, moody experience that when you leave, you're like, you're like, oh, I just do. Oh, I feel it's like, unsettling, yeah, for sure. It's unsettling. That's a good term, yeah, which right is the there. only and stuff that, that really gets under my skin. Like I, as much as I go on about jump Terraria. scares and like, uh, I don't know, Resident Evil. The stuff that really gets me is like you know what's the, what are those two outlast outlast one and two just, oh yeah you yeah, just get my blood good. dude they just ruined yeah. my day i can't ugh, it's like watching <laughs> it's it's to me it's the difference between <laughs> friday the 13th which is whatever and watching right. uh, her, uh hereditary which gives me nightmares for oh weeks. yeah it's just, yeah. just a certain kind of horror that gets me every time and this this game seems to know what pushes my buttons so i'm really glad to hear you liked it though uh, oh yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the crap. I hate that I waited so long to play it. It was like I said, I remember when it came out, you know, 2017, yeah. and for some reason I just never could pick it up. And I don't know if it got better over time or if I, it looked interesting. I'll tell you, the cover art is what sold me. I mean, have you seen the cover art to Darkwood? Yeah, it's very cool. It's freaky. It's very cool. It's, it's very freaky. And so it's it's always been in my mind to get it and I was just I was on keymeller.co one day and I was like I was looking at some games to you know request keys for and I was like, "Hey, there's a Darkwood I never did play." I was like, eh, "And why not?" And I guess it being near Halloween, I guess they said, "Send that guy a code so he mm-hmm. can freak himself out and feel like he's going to throw up. These kind of games make you feel like you're going to throw up. Is that what it is? It's kind of like you feel dead. You almost feel like you're crawling with worms or something. It's I mean, like, oh, I guess you kind of, right yeah. Yeah. I'd say that's true. That yeah. game, that game definitely gets uh, under your skin in that way. And the way that a, a worm would in your corpse, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. Um, all right. I'm going to tell you about a game now that's not in the same vein, but we're in the same neighborhood. Let's say that, uh, the game is called end zone, a world apart, and it's got nothing to do with football. Well, that sounds exactly like what I played. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, it's nothing like football. It is instead oh, okay, good. a top down city builder set what? in a dystopic post-apocalyptic world. This looks interesting. Yeah. So it's a survival city builder type thing. Uh, games you want to think of are things like Banished, um, hmm. where it's more about, it's not Sim City by any stretch. It's more like survival, survive, sur- build your city, but also survive lots of harsh conditions. Uh, there are plenty oh, of other games so like it's this. like uh, that Frost game, uh, Frostpunk. A little like Frostpunk. Yeah, good example. Um, the difference here is that there are a lot of difficulty settings I can tinker with with this that make it so... It's not as punishing as Frostpunk, which was I found to be over. Oh, it was so punishing. It's like, yeah. hey, what would it feel like if uh, if you were in Russia? Yeah, it's a bit much. Is that a thing? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, the Russians, there's some parts of Russia would be all right. <laughs> oh, yeah, parts of Russia. No, I'm talking about the really cold parts. Yeah, like Siberia is what you're thinking of. Right. Uh, this is uh, a game where you build after civilization has completely gone to poop, uh, what they call in the game a shattered world. You're threatened by constant radiation, toxic storms, rainstorms, and droughts. There are no zombies. Those That's not part of this world. Uh, so no horror no, elements. So you're either dead or alive. Is that yeah, the... That's basically it. Yeah. You either survive the apocalypse and are going to try a, a fresh take on the world or you're, or you're dead. Uh, standouts here. Our graphics are really good, I think, for a game like this. Uh, cool also it. super simple UI, really easy to sort of find your way around menus and figure out what to build next and how to do it. The tutorial is very helpful. Um, but there's a lot of stuff like, uh, go harvest, uh, whatever's left of the wood and then bring it back to this place. And, oh, you've cleaned out that zone of wood. Well, move the zone somewhere else and your workers will, will do it there. Okay. So that's what I was about to say. It looks like, um, uh, what is that game I just played recently? That is a space game that kind of does this. Do you have to have your people positioned in a certain area within, uh, the placement of like the collecting of the wood? So like, is there like a ring where you're characters have to be to be able to the characters, know to do anything the characters don't but if you're gonna have 
um, let's say it's a uh, reclamation thing that like that takes, Mars. that takes like plastic and other junk out of it, out of things. Uh, if you put that out there in the middle of the place, you want to make sure that in the ring is some plastic deposits or junk deposits so they can actually get to them. And then you assign workers to that building. So, uh, so yeah, like if they're, if you've got workers assigned there and you're within its ring of influence as stuff that they can harvest, they'll do it. They'll, they'll just do gotcha. it. So you're not actually controlling right. each dude. Um, right, 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 right. Like yeah, surviving Mars is what I was thinking of, I think. And it kind of had that. Yeah, similar stuff. Actually, surviving yeah. Mars is a lot like this, to be honest. The, right. the big difference is it's just a little bit more like, oh, it's Earth and everything's to shit and you don't even have water <laughs> and at night it gets real bad. And, you <laughs> There's know. no Matt Damon. It's a totally different game. Plus, it's called End Zone. Where is this game from? Is uh, this a, is this an American game? It's a weird. I mean, any, anybody in America would go End Zone instantly football thought well right? maybe i think these guys are i don't know where they're from actually that's a really good point uh it's great gently mad, mad studios gently mad the, studios some assemble entertainment is publishing the title it's available on steam early access currently uh they seem to be very responsive to their community one of those good early access experiences so far for me and for that for others um i like it i think the the micro is really good in the game by micro i mean you know like a lot of these games are just sort of sitting around waiting for gold to build up. That's right. not this kind of game. You're like, all right, well, I need to check on this building because something's weird. Oh, they're so ah, these are Germans. Oh, they're Germans. Well, Germans. That's problem. They don't know what an end zone is. Um. <laughs> anyway, so it's good. I like it a lot, and uh, the music's cool. It's one to watch for sure. If you're not, if you're not an early access kind of person, I totally get it. Um, there's already a lot here to play with so uh, if this sort of stuff tickles your fancy at all grab it if you want to wait go ahead i'm sure it'll be more money when it releases hey I'm man what exactly is a fancy and why would you want to tickle it uh all, you really i hear that to, a lot i get kicked off twitch if i put it on camera i can't show you my okay fancy. Don't, don't don't show me your fancy okay yeah, not so allowed. you don't need to lay down on the bed to tuck in your fancy no i don't did you watch that thing right. by the way did you watch i did thing? not you need to watch it <laughs> hey let me tell you why you need to watch for at too it's not just for that moment because that moment is something, but uh, right. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Borat Two has way more heart than I expected. <laughs> like it actually he, has some feel good elements yeah. in it that are genuine and real, and I really liked it. He kind of does it in the it's, 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 Sasha kind of does it in the first one too, right? Kind of, but not like he, this. This is I've seen them both. And, uh, this one to me yeah. really rung a bunch of bells. I wasn't expecting to have rung. Yeah, but Borat it tickled your before. fancy. Yeah, I, it tickled, right. yeah, it tickled my fancy, but not in a sort of Rudy Giuliani way. <laughs> anyway, uh, people should watch it. It's good. Um, all right, we're okay. So that's the game. Oh, and it's on Steam. That's where it is. The name again is End Zone: A World Apart. Check it out. And that name again is Mr. Plow. Mr. Plow. This week, yes, I played the game. I played that was new. Also, re also received this game for review. Uh, it just came out October the nineteenth, twenty twenty. It's called Crown Trick. And I think you're going to like this game, Scott. Huh. I think you need to get it. It is a roguelike with turn-based combat oh. as a dungeon crawler. Oh, you're speaking oh. my language, sir. I like it. It is it is a it, it is it is beautiful. It has trick. some great looking animation. It's got some great looking painterly uh cut scenes that are just just gorgeous yeah. the only thing that it does uh that it does bother me is is my rayman problem oh we got disconnected limbs do we we have no oh, arms Brian. for wit to carry our weapons however it's okay that so much it's not it's, it's the okay. least favorite thing in the world it's okay so uh, okay so we're gonna help l who's who's our our character here she we're playing mm -hmm. uh we're playing crown trick and what's going on oh, is we crown start out trick not clown trick no 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 a crown like you would put on your head now okay. you remember remember a few weeks back i played a game called slash quest where a, a sentient sword mm -hmm. uh directed the primary character to do things this one is a crown and what is the trick i don't know but I'm sure I'm going to find out. I haven't completed this game yet, but I'm a couple hours in. But I really, I'll tell you, at first I was like, oh, I'm just not interested in this. I'm, this I'm just looking at video. I'm very, not the video chat saying, let me jump ahead some. Uh, I'm very interested in this. This is such yes. a jam. 
And, it, and at first I was like, oh, this is going to be overly simple. It's going to be another slash quest, which don't get me wrong. I love slash quest because it's a two button game that does really simple things. And I, I was afraid this was going to be a very simple game, but it really starts to increase in difficulty very quickly. And it really grabbed me after the first, maybe the first oh my 30 gosh, minutes. You got to fight a chicken and the giant chicken. You got to is fight a, a it's chicken. It's called Swash Chuckler. Love- it's called Swash Chuckler, Brian. <laughs> They are. They have some great names. I love the weapons because this is grid-based combat. Swash. By the way, I just lit that chicken on fire. Yeah, I'm gonna have myself no, no. some barbecue Corre- chicken tonight. Corre- correction: Swash Chuckler. You said a Swash Sw- Chuckler on fire. Get He's that a straight. Swash Chuckler. Yeah. So I love the combat system in this oh, game, and it's I'm been compared this. to another game, but I can't recall what it was now. But I love the combat system. Uh, you can do blinking, so you'll you'll have a if you have a weapon, uh, it'll be able to, it'll be able to attack in a certain uh, direction, or sometimes all around you, according to what the weapon is. Axes you can swing around in a, in like a a circle, and then you know like swords you can you can go so far like one or two. Uh, tiles away from you but you also could do this blinking thing which allows you to blink to another location so if you've uh, made your move but you're worried that that system be turned over to the to the enemy you can blink out of there and force them to come chase you Mm. Uh, so i really liked i like the looting i like i like how um you're you're unlocking what are called familiars in this dream realm of randomly generated uh dungeon rooms and weapons uh, and they, you unlock these familiars and then they come back to the hub area where they will, you know, they'll sell you things, upgrade equipment sure. and that kind of stuff. Sure. And you'll do that with through currency through gold and it's like a soul shard, uh, kind of thing. One, you, one, if you die, you lose, I think you lose all your gold if you die before you get to the end of the area. But I think you always keep your soul shard. So there's two different paths for upgrades and and getting uh and getting the weapons that you might want or getting the possibility of those weapons spawning uh during uh during the creation of each of these i really liked it when i thought when i played it though i was like i was like scott's gonna love this game oh it looks like my jam like a lot totally looks like my jam i would play the hell out of this game i'm gonna i'm getting this i'm getting this game right it's called crown trick it's on uh steam now for it is 10 percent off uh just came out october 19th is 18 dollars right now normally i think it's going to be 20 dollars uh the average yeah. gameplay is about 17 hours but you can easily sit down for 30 if you if you do the main story and the extras which is how i was playing it i was in no hurry to get done i was enjoying each one of them and strategizing uh, on how to best beat each of these uh, each of these rooms yeah. as the, I went along. The description says all the uh, dungeons are procedurally generated, so in theory, you can right. get a lot of replayability out of it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm interested in the story. I haven't really dug into the story yet. Uh, I feel like there's a good story there, but I uh, honestly, in the you know the the two three hours I played, I didn't pick up a lot of story because I was spending so much time trying to learn the combat system. And just enjoying myself, just looking at the beautiful, just the beautiful maps and stuff. I just, I loved it. Yeah, it looks great. It looks super great. Next, next studios, and then uh, is the is the developer and published by Team Seventeen, uh, which I always, oh, I use Team like Seventeen. Team Seventeen is great. Uh, some great. Yeah, they got the, the the Worm series. That's them. Yeah, they published some great games. Published some great oh, games. Oh, Goner Two just showed up on Game Pass. Sorry, I'm noticing all these things. I was just trying to see if this game was on Game Pass, just you know, because you always check. No, I mean, yeah, that happens a lot of times. Yeah. It'll it'll just show up on Game Pass. I, I hope it does. It. I, I hope it, it does really well because when I when I first started playing it. Uh, I got it pretty early on and I didn't see a lot of reviews and I was like, Ooh, I hope, hope it's not going to be, you know, but it, the reviews are starting to come in they're, and they're pretty positive. Everything I've seen. So I far. think it looks great. I'm going to check it out. That seems like my jam for show. For show. All right. Well, we've done well here with our games today. Now this, whoops, shit. <laughs> Where is it? It's <laughs> <laughs> Time for us to play Guess Our Game. We uh, do this every show where we have a little uh, sound clip. We try to confuse each other into wondering what the hell kind of game is this. And they're always older, but not always that old. Sometimes they're yeah. Than sometimes you think. we go a little early. You, you know, if 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 I if I pick a game from two thousand five, don't mm-hmm. be shocked. Two thousand nine, I think, is one of the more recent ones I've done. Yeah, don't uh, freak out because yeah, don't freak out. It's all right. So here's mine. Let's see if you can figure this out. A game I was completely obsessed with when it happened when it came out. Uh, let's say it's about 
90s in the 90s old? In the 90s. In the 1990s? Yeah, the 1990s okay. is when you would have seen this. The 19th gotcha, century gotcha. still. Uh, so, or 20th, rather. 20th so, century. So that's how that works. Yeah, yeah, that's how that works. We're always one ahead of the thing you're in. Anyway, yeah, yeah. here it is. See if you can figure it out. Oh, and it just switched up. That. Now we're playing a totally different game. Any guesses? I don't recall this game, but this game has a lot of sound processing that sounds uh, similar to a lot of things I remember. Oh, um, the chat room's smart. They got it already. Oh, the chat room got it. All right, yeah. chat room. I, I don't know, but it, it certainly... It was a different intro music, and then it went into this fun kind of little yeah, intro and then womp. battle music, basically. So the game is uh, available on the Game Boy Advance. If you're out there, oh, trying to find it. Game Boy Advance, that was some really good audio for that. Yeah, it did all right. Uh, the game itself is Advance Wars for the original oh, GBA. I never played that game. one. I know what it is, but I've never played it. It's an amazing game. Uh, Advance Wars is one of my favorite. GBA games ever. I would play it right now if I had it in front of me. I loved Advance I Wars. loved it. I would make sweet. I would let it touch my fancy. Yeah, let it rub your fancy. And uh, here's the thing. It's in the, sort of the same vein as this clown trick thing you showed me. Or crown, sorry. Yeah. You're yeah. saying clown. Crown trick. And man, It's not clown game. trick. It's crown trick. I don't know what the trick is yet. No. But the crown is definitely in there. There are no clowns in there, as far as we know. No clowns. Yeah, stay out of the clown. Happy world. Halloween. Happy Halloween, everybody. Well, by the way, this will be the last show before Halloween, right? Oh, yeah, it is, I guess. Because we won't have another one before Halloween. Yeah, so what it is. So so have a great Halloween. So happy Halloween. Yeah, happy COVID-19 Halloween. <laughs> happy, well, happy chunk the candy from the porch Halloween. Yeah, all the numbers are going up, so enjoy your holiday. All right, uh, Brian, I'm going to play yours now. Let's see if I can figure it out. Here we go. Oh wait, look! Look! Oh, you have set in the, up in the in the first ten seconds. I'll give you extra credit for getting it. After that, you should probably get it. Go ahead. Okay, let me see what I got. <laughs> the frick is this? <laughs> Is this like this not Warcraft orcs and humans, is it? Yes, it's Warcraft oh. orcs and humans. Is it? Oh no way. Yeah, I tried. I tried to pick an area that might not be as obvious, but yeah. I could hear the the or, the orky talk was definitely familiar, but I I haven't heard orcs and humans in years and years and years. Yes. Wow. Good job. Look at you. Yeah. I figured it might be in your mind since you were playing Warcraft so much. I was hoping it would be the original, man. I have been. I've yeah. been playing WoW like a madman the last couple of weeks since this past I'm a madman. Can't stop. Today, actually, tomorrow was supposed to be the release date of Shadowlands, the new expansion, but they pushed it, and we still don't have a new date. So get your shit together, Blizzard. You can't be doing this while I'm playing uh, freaking Cyberpunk. What are you doing to me? Yeah. Oh, I might get. I might get. Uh, Watchdog Legion. Watchdog. Oh, everybody's I, I've seen a lot of people looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to it as well. I oh, I want it to I be good. Know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I, I don't know if I can I'm trying not to not try I'm trying not to because I am afraid I will get sucked in deep and I don't want to Well yeah, that game that would right be now. one you would get sucked in deep. But this is the yeah. thing. Like if WoW was coming out tomorrow, I wouldn't even think about it. I'd just be focused on that. Right. Since it's not, I feel like it's time for a big triple A game. I think Legion might be up oh, for a yeah. bit. Because in a month I'll be playing freaking uh, cyberpunk. Yeah, and by man, that time cyberpunk's not even a question. We're going to be living in a very different, potentially a very different <laughs> world right. in a month. So we'll, we'll see. know. We'll know in about two weeks, won't we? We're, we'll know at. what's going on. Yeah, we'll see what's what. Uh, all right. Well, that was fun. I always enjoy that. Now this time for us to read an email from our listenership. These come to us at core. Ooh, nope, ships. wrong show. These come to us at boopshow at gmail.com. <laughs> boopshow at gmail.com. I knew that. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Because I'm tired. Look, I got a sore throat. I don't know what it is. I don't want to think it about it. I don't want to get tested. All right? 
I just want to yeah. have it be yeah, cold. You did, you, you're doing the right thing. You're gargling with salt water. You need to get you some. You need to get you some old school uh, remedies. You need some uh, lemon juice, honey, you know, and some and some hot water, and Look just this little teacup get I got. rid of it. You see this? It's like small one, like the little one you always carry. Around. Oh, that's nice. Yep, I got an old bag in there. <laughs> got to clean this out, but there's a little tea bag lump. There it is. <laughs> Been doing the tea thing. Is that, where you, is that where you keep your fancy? Lemon. <laughs> yeah, this is where I touch my fancies right in there. <laughs> anyway, this email came to us at boopshow at gmail.com, and it says the following. This is from Mr. Belvedere. I assume it's the dude from oh, TV. Oh, I love Mr. Belvedere. I didn't. It was a bad show. Oh, come on. Dude, there was nothing good about Mr. Belvedere. Think about it, it for a second. It was the best. No, it was bad. It was bad. Even then, I knew it was bad. Even then. You didn't know nothing. How old were you? Look, different strokes. I can have fond memories of it, but I know it was bad. I know. Different strokes wasn't bad. You shut your mouth. It was bad. Silver spoons, They're bad. different strokes. Silver spoons no, was silver bad. No, silver spoons was trash. Uh, <laughs> what was the sp other spinoff? The... The, all the girls living with the old maid, the maid from. Uh, oh my gosh! You don't even know different strokes than the facts of life. Like, facts of life with Tootie and everybody. Look, different strokes and facts of life were major hitters. Silver Spoons went for like a uh, half a season, and then it went straight to syndication. So I can get on board with your they with your trash bad. talk, but George Clooney started on on facts of life. I mean, come on. He's lucky he made it out of there for real. Like he's seriously lucky. And by the way, that lasted longer than you think. Silver Spoons went from 82 to 87. I know. It went straight. It almost practically went straight to syndication. Those kind of those kind of shows really lasted a long time, even though they didn't necessarily have a primetime spot. Well, I don't they think. I think Silver Spoons was straight up on. Uh, well, here. Hold on. Now I got to know. It was originally. It wasn't a primetime spot. Spot, but then it went to syndication, if I remember correctly. Well, everything does season. after it ends, right? So, well, no, I mean, it went straight to syndication, meaning that it only was sold to markets in syndication that it never had first run uh, prime time. Oh, you're right. It got shows. canceled by NBC and then got moved to NBC Communications, uh, got the series to do syndication with after that. That's interesting. Right. Never question Brian's TV knowledge yeah. from the 80s. No, I believe you. I believe you now. <laughs> but also that show is garbage and so is everything else I <laughs> anyway he says uh hey i've always listened to your show love the get guess my game segment wish i had the no, time zone to watch more of your live streams anyway have you ever heard of a spanish game developer called a uh, developer called loco malito loco malito loco malito which stands for crazy malito Crazy Mallows. Says, since the 2000s, he'd been making freeware video games which looked like they belong in the oh. 80s. I mean, chip tunes, tough gameplay, CRT scan lines, the works. You should check out his mm. website at locomalato.com. Every game is still very well made and very hard. Uh, if only, let's see, only oh, one of you I reads like this, this email, could you please, oh, <laughs> I should have done this. Could you prank the other in the Guess My Game segment with one of these? There are videos on the website, Ooh. so it's pretty easy with regards. Well, well, I guess you ruined that. Too bad, Mr. Thanks Belvedere. Yeah, it didn't happen. Uh, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm on the website now on the Loco Malito, and I'm looking at it now, and I like what I am seeing graphic-wise. Oh, you're excited. These are, these are like really high-quality, uh, in, the, in the spirit of kind of games. Did he, uh, and he like made it. these himself? Is that what it I'm gathering like. here? Like here, this game it he made. Like. He's got a game yeah. called Solar Gladiators made in 2020. Solar Gladiators. Oh, look at this. That looks, that looks, if you, if you told me that was a game that was an arcade, I'd be like, sure. Well, I just, believe you. You just download this stuff. You just get to play it. You just you just download it. You just play it right here. You play it just like right this. Uh, look at that. Oh, it's got a real it's got a real good mame feel to it. Yeah. yeah. I like everything about these. I love yeah. stuff like this. That's so cool that he's making these. Influences the disc of Tron. Hmm. And uh the Chakram of Xena. Oh, I like all of this. Oh, and they made a custom cabinet for a couple of these because they were so well received. So, like at Cabinet yeah. Con or whatever it's called, the oh, like arcade con. And, and you gave Mr. Belvedere a bad name. Look oh. at that, Mr. Belvedere coming through for us. No, the TV show Mr. Belvedere gave Mr. Belvedere a bad name because it's a bad television show made of. Poo. But is it? It's made of poo. Oh, but, I'm gonna play but, the side scrolly one. Look at this thing, Chad. Look at this. That looks like a game to play. <laughs> I it looks like game. you could. You could. Right now was Emmanuel Lewis. No, what was that? What was what was that Emmanuel was Lewis Webster. on? That was Webster. That was Webster. But wasn't didn't he have like a Mr. Belvedere type too? It, 
Either way, it sucked. Was it, was it a spinoff? It was I'm having a like spin out. Kind of, I was wasn't a, really big into Mr. Belvedere. It's poopy on a tree. It's bad. Everything everything we've mentioned is all from the same era. It's all cut from the same cloth, and it's shit. All of it. <laughs> I And I grew up then, man. I watched that stuff, but it was bad. I, I, I ate all of it. I, I got my cereal. I went and I sit down and said, let's eat this. <laughs> I'm just going to eat this. I mean, Saturday morning's a different animal. I loved everything on Saturday mornings, but primetime comedies the 80s were not great all right. right i don't think mr i don't even know if mr <clears throat> belvedere was really was he prime time oh yeah he it? oh yeah it was so many straight to syndication stuff during that time it's mr. really hard to say belvedere let's find out mr belvedere oh it's based on a novel Jeez. yeah it's based on an old story to me it's been, it's been a movie before i mean it's been around for a while i did this not know a, that uh this ran yeah. only two years 85 to 87 right oh no 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 I'm sorry. Hold on. It doesn't. Did it also? Did it take a silver spoon's root? Sorry, eighty-five to ninety, so five years. Oh. And it is. Let's see. It ran on. Uh, what channel it doesn't say? Oh, come on now. Ah, uh, that definitely means it was probably straight to syndication. Thing, it was probably on all those. Should have been. Uh, all those Fox WB syndicate channels. Yeah. Oh no! Here it is. ABC Television. No. It doesn't say what time of day. It didn't I, say what time of day. I remember day that being at night, like, you know, must see TV time, TV, CV time. Right, right, right. <laughs> CV TV. <laughs> CV TV. <laughs> oh, the cough, the cough. I'm trying to keep it in. All right. I love a Mr. Belvedere game where I could play Mr. Belvedere. That'd you're, be great. You're wrong to like anything associated with Mr. Belvedere, except for this new guy who sent us this cool link. That's pretty right. cool. He's a new guy. Boopshow at gmail.com is where you send it or where you send your emails. Please send more. We love them. And uh, in the meantime, check us out at frogpants.com slash B O O P. Uh, Twitter, Boop Show. Brian's at the Brian Dunaway. I'm at Scott Johnson. Oh, hi. And you can find more shows like this at frogpants.com. Brian, any final finishing words to the audience today? Finish him. Uh -huh. Babality. Uh huh. Is that what you want to no, know? Okay. Yeah. Totally Let's see. Um, I'll be playing. Uh, I finished. I finished the. Uh, I finished the uh, Zelda. Yeah. And so now I've got to figure out what I'm doing on Thursday. So tune in Thursdays when I figure and figure it out with me. Yeah. Help him figure out what he's going to stream on Twitch. Yeah. Dot TV forward slash Brian Dunaway. That's right. Check it out. If you want to catch the show live three 30 mountain time on Mondays at twitch.tv slash frog pants, we expect to see some of you there. Thank you all for watching and being here and listening. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. I don't like steam. I love steam. <laughs> oh, yeah. I like how either you're shrinking or your camera is going it's high. Me. It's me. <laughs> I'm pooped in my camera. You know, it's a combination.